What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with the review for Power Book Four Force. This is season one, episode number five, you guys. The episode was titled Take Me Home. All right, you guys. So, before we jump into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other on the channel and are not subscribed to the channel, I'm gonna need you guys to do me that solid favor and stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. Do me that favor by liking the video, turning on your notifications, subscribing to the channel, and sharing the video. And you guys, with that out of the way, without further ado, let's discuss Power Book 4 Force, shall we? All right, you guys. So I think we'll start up with the Flynn's, right? Yeah, so I'm going to start up with the Flynn's. So we see um, Claudia. Well, actually, no. We saw Mai. So Mai and Claudia, they, they were having a conversation with each other, right? Mai is upset at Claudia saying, you know, at this point, Claudia hasn't moved Dahlia. Dahlia is the name of the drug, right? Like Claudia promised. So Claudia says that they have to move the distro, you know, methodically. Like they can't move it in bulk and stuff like that. And then their, comp their competition finds out, you know, what they are moving. At this point, Mai doesn't really give a shit about that, right? Because she doesn't want other dealers to get hip to what they're doing, right? Mai says, I don't, basically she says she doesn't give a fuck. And, you know, um, she'll take this to someone else. Hell, even other, you know, a lot of someone else's, right? I'm like, ooh, Claudia, you're probably going to have to kill your puss pretty soon, right? So then we see Vic, right? So Vic is talking to his boy, Simon. So Vic is telling Simon this plan that he has, this plan that he has with Tommy and Diamond, right? So I'm gonna explain that plan to you guys a little later in the review, the situation that's going on between Diamond, Vic, and Tommy. But, you know, um, Simon is like, you okay with working with CBI? And Vic is like, you know, I'm cool with CBI. We ain't got no beef, no issues, no no ham, no nothing like that. So CBI and I are good. And then if I make this deal work, I ain't got to run to daddy to ask daddy for money. And by the way, you guys, don't mind that big, uh, my basket in the back seat. Don't mind it. I just wanted to say that because I, I, I just looked in the camera. I'm like, yeah, you can see it. Don't mind it. I'll move it. Because we're going to review Candy and the Gang and I'll, it'll be gone by tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow, no, we'll do it in the car tomorrow. But hey, so back to this. So then we see Claudia. So Claudia has called, um, actually at one point in the episode, we saw Claudia. So Tommy was driving his car, right? Claudia, like she did in, in, in the pre, not last week's episode, but I think the week before episode. Remember, Claudia in that G-Wagon pulled up on him. She pulled up on him in this episode and she gave him a taste of Dahlia, which I said, which we'll get into that as well, right? But Claudia had called Tommy in this episode and, um, you know, she, she asked him, what does a deal look like with him, right? So he says he's going to be running point, so he's going to take 70%. She says, fuck that. He, she says, it's 60-40. He says, fuck that. So they had a standstill, right? So then she said, he says, okay, how does that work, right? Um, he, she says, does it go your way or does it go my way? She says it goes your way, right? So he's like, okay, cool. So then she tells him, I need you to run interference for me, right? And we'll talk about that interference in just a little bit as well. So then we see Victor, right? So Victor went to go pick up Gloria. Gloria is like, I'm getting ready to go to the bar. He says, like, I'll I'll bring you back in enough time. So I'll drop. Actually, I think he said he'll drop her off at the bar, right? So he takes Gloria to this land that he's purchased, right? And you guys remember the last week's episode, he had that napkin that they drew their dream home on, right? So he's telling Gloria, we can build this here, we can build that there, we can, you know, have it face, we can have this facing west, so that way we can see the sun when it rises or sets, one of the two, I can't remember which one it was, right? So then we see Vic and um, Gloria, they about to get hot and heavy with each other, right? And off in the distance, camera are flashing, right? They don't see it, but um, it is Polly. So Polly is watching Victor and Gloria, right? So Polly runs this information back to Walter, and Walter doesn't like the fact, we all know that Walter doesn't like the fact that Gloria and Victor are, you know, an item with each other, right? We know he wants Victor to marry an Irish girl, have Irish babies, right? He doesn't want his babies, to his grandchildren to be biracial, right? So... In a nutshell, you know, Polly's like, you know, I can't, you know, my son, we can't, I can't help him with anything, but you got your two kids, right? 
both of them want the same thing and here you are basically interfering in their lives you might want to butt the fuck out in a nutshell is what he was telling him butt the fuck out of their lives right so then we see claudia right so claudia got a phone call from tommy because the interference that she had him run what happened is he followed my he followed my and my gave some of the drugs to this one guy right so the guy went into the bathroom tommy is in the bathroom with him goes in the stall takes the stuff right the guy opens the stall like what the fuck and tommy had the gun i'm like oh wait bro i got kids he's like if you do what i say you can go home to your kids right so he's telling her that you know these little barrels that we got this ain't shit we need weight and she says no no worries she got it lined up right so then we see walter so walter went over to glorious bar right and he is i mean blake's basically being outright racist right so he knows that victor and gloria are a thing right but he's telling gloria that you know you're not gonna be the one that he wakes up to kissing every morning i was like ooh, bold as fuck right and you won't be the one that's kissing my grandchildren at night i'm like oh racist much so then he tells her you know that I guess he's trying to say that with her and Victor, their relationship started out as a debt and that, you know, if she stops paying, if she stops seeing Victor, that that debt will be, you know, called in full. I'm like, are you OK? I, I see you. Right. So then remember, I don't remember which episode this was, but you guys remember the two cops that were watching Gloria's bar and they saw Tommy and they thought that Tommy was a new guy that's working for Walter. Well, they're outside of the bar again, and they're watching, right? So they're talking about how Walter has Claudia cooking the books, and it all looks, you know, it all looks FDA approved and all that kind of stuff, and how his, you know, his um his drops are, you know, everything is is seamless basically at this point, right? But they realize that the the, the main way, the easiest way that's going to be to get to Walter is through Polly, right? I don't necessarily know if Polly is a rat. Do you guys, would you guys pick Polly to be, I don't know. But, you know, the thing I wonder with the detectives, right, is I wonder how much do they know about Polly and his son? Because I feel like what could happen is they could try to make a deal with Polly. You help us, we'll do everything we can to help your son, right? I'm I'm wondering how far they're, I'm wondering that part, right? Because I think that would be the only thing that would get Polly to flip on Walter would be his son. I think that's his um, Achilles heel. So then we see Victor, right? So after Walter had his conversation, <laughs> hacking up his lungs in front of Gloria, um, Victor is pissed off at him. Victor's going off on him like, what the fuck, da? Like, you went to Gloria and you threatened Gloria. Like, what the hell, right? He said, you will die. You happy with the Irish girl? I know that was a terrible accident, right? So... He says, oh, yeah, like that worked out for you. And Walter back slapped the fuck out of Victor. I'm like, damn, Victor, he slapped the taste out of your mouth. Like, literally what black parents say, I slapped the taste out of your mouth. Nigga, he slapped the taste out of your mouth, right? So when Victor left, Claudia said, you know, he's not like you. And I, I wonder what she meant by that, right? I wonder what she meant. But we'll we'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll eventually figure it out. We got five, we're five episodes in. So we're at the halfway point, you guys. And I don't even know. And according to 50, they haven't even renewed it for a season two yet. So after Victor paid Claudia, not Claudia, after Victor paid Gloria a visit, Claudia decides she wants to take her raggedy ass and play Gloria a visit, right? So Claudia knows that, you know, Victor loves Gloria and Gloria loves him, right? So then she puts that a brochure down about that land. So that land is worth $2.1 million, I believe she said. So she said what she'll do is she'll sign that land over to Gloria. And Gloria can do whatever she wants. If she want to pay off her debt, she can do that, right? And Gloria's like, I know you got your motherfucking nerves. You don't brought your raggedy ass down here. Bitch, get the fuck out of my place. I was like, exactly, Gloria. Throw that skinny health out, right? So... Then at the end of the episode with with, um, with um, Claudia, we see Mai, right? 
So Mai is back in um, Claudia's apartment, right? She's finding out about you know her 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 her, her deal going bust, right? She's pissed off, right? And then she, you know Claudia tells her, well, you know I got people and I got reach, and you will need me. I was like, oh Claudia, kind of like it, kind of like it, right? So Mai says, I knew that going into business with you was a big mistake. And she slaps the shit out of her. I'm like, oh, that was your last move. And it re- literally was because Claudia had this ice pick because she was th- she was messing with a block of ice, right? And when Mai turned around to walk away, pop! Claudia stabbed her in the back of the head. I'm like, ooh, Jesus Christ. Mm. And then at the end of the episode, Claudia was upstairs in her room. Mai was still on that carpet bleeding out i'm like damn so you stab the bitch and you leave the bitch sitting on the land there mm, 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 mm. rest in peace my i knew one i knew you weren't gonna last that long but rest in peace to my so let's move forward you guys all right guys let's talk about tommy real quick and then we'll go into diamond tommy vic and their plan right so we see tommy so tommy is at his crib right and you know he has his lighter in his hand he's going over every he's just thinking about everything that's happened right in the past, I don't even know if it's, I don't, know how, I don't even know how many days this has been at this point, but he's going over everything that's happened, right? So then we see him driving, and that's when Claudia had pulled up on him, right? So Claudia had, you know, she had the vial of Dahlia, right? I've already told you guys this, but she had the vial of Dahlia. And, you know, he tells her at that point, before they made, this is before they made the deal, right? He says, you know, um... That she, he knows that she has no distro, basically, right? So she took, she put some. I think she put some on her, on her, on her hand, and she licked it on her, put it on her lips, and then she kissed him, and he got the high from it, right? So then he was telling Liliana, he was explaining to Liliana about the high, right? So he was telling her that, like, with this high, there was no drug, there was no hot, there was no crashing, there was no, you know, aftertaste, there was no cotton mouth, there was no aftershock, there was none of that, right? And that's Pete Liana's interest, right? So what they're trying to do is they're trying to break down the chemical comp. I think they're trying to break down the chemical compounds of this drug, but anything that they mix it with, it combusts, right? So Liliana wants to know, ask him about an, if, if it had any aftertaste. He says, only thing I taste it was lipstick, right? And that's when he told her, you know, that um, Claudia kissed him, right? So then we later see Liliana, she's still trying to break the drug down, Dahlia, but she's, you know, having no luck at this point, right? So Tommy tells her, you know what, I'm going to go and try to get you some more so that way we can try to figure this out, right? So then she says to Tommy, oh, you know, this is kind of interesting. Like, we're, we're partners. He says, we are not partners, right? He says to her that she needs to go because the Serbians are looking, but they're looking for both of you, right? Granted, she, she stole the drugs. But you've taken out, you took out Tatiana and some of their other people. So the block is hot for both Tommy and for Liliana, right? Um, but he tells her she needs to find somewhere else to go. She's like, I have nowhere else to go. Where am I going? I can't go back to New York. L.A. is shit. Miami, shit. Where am I going to go? Because he's telling her to take the drugs with her. And she's like, where am I going to go? What am I going to do, right? So we still see her later in the episode. She's still trying to figure out the chemical compound of the drugs but like i said she's not able to do it because like i said each time she tries to mix it with something it can bust right and she told tommy that right actually this is the point where tommy told her she actually more than once tommy told liliana she needed to go but then at one point he said to her if she does go somewhere don't go anywhere without telling me keep that in mind you guys right so he's telling her she needs to start a new life. She's like, I don't need, I don't have, where am I going to start a new life at, right? He says, you don't have a family. She said, no, I'm not going to take this shit to my family's doorstep, right? So she says, no. So then, um, I've already talked about that one time he met up, followed my, right? So we see Liliana. So Liliana took, so she's, this whole part, this whole episode, Liliana's thing was she was trying to break down Dahlia, right? She's trying to break it down, but she also wants to take a hit of it, right? So at one point in the episode, she took a hit of Dahlia. I was like, oh my God, Liliana, why would you do something so stupid? Tommy told you not to do it, right? So when she took the hit, 
she got so high, she walked out of the apartment. I was like, girl, that is going to be your fatal move. Because I was thinking that Liliana, um, when she, um, when that happened, I was like, oh, Liliana, I think you might about to, I think you about to meet your maker, right? Because at one point in the episode, we saw the Serbian boss, Markovic, Mike Mikovic, something like that. I don't know what that man's name is, right? So he's still, he's upset about the fact that Tommy, you know, took out Tatiana, right? One of the guys was talking shit about Tatiana and the big boss just said, pop. I was like, damn. So now he wants, you know, the big boss wants to kill Tommy, right? And when Liliana left that apartment, I was like, Liliana, I'm like, you just put yourself in terrible danger, right? Like they know who you are and you have that distinctive ass you know, that scar on your face, right? Like with me, I have a distinct, like I have a dimple. I have, like if people said, like you could describe me, they would say, I have my dimple, I have a tattoo on my neck, I have the tattoo right here. Like I have things that you can identify me, right? And just like with Liliana, you got that scar right there. It's just, I don't know why she did, well, she was high, but she left, right? And she, um, she left, she left, she left, she left, she left right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause here and we're going to talk about the rest of the stuff that happened in the episode. All right, you guys. So we see Diamond. So Diamond, he's out running, right? And then we see Seamus, right? So Seamus tells Diamond, get in the car. I'm like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like this nigga. I don't like him, right? So we find out why Diamond, why, Di why um, Seamus has an issue with Diamond, right? So back in 2006, Diamond had this batch of drugs that were on the street, right? It killed five people. And Diamond was like, yeah, you know, and when I found out about it, I immediately had it pulled from the streets, right? So he said, yeah, but you did that. But, you know, there were people who were affected by it, right? So then he asked him, does he know someone named Kiki Watson, right? Diamond was like, yeah, I don't know who that is. And, you know, Diamond's like, you know, he did his time in prison, so... He's, you know, he's, he's, he's paid his debt to society, right? Well, Seamus ain't really feeling that, that response that he gave to him. He's, he thinks it's bullshit, right? So, the Kiki Watson person, I'm, a, I'm going to assume that this is Seamus' sister, right? And I'm going to assume that instead of her dying, you know, maybe she has, you know, some long-term medical effects, you know, like some long-term, you know, disabilities from being on the drugs, because you guys remember Victor. Victor was talking about him taking care of his sister on a cop's salary, right? Diamond also clocked the fact that, hey, you're a dirty cop. If no, you know, if you if you leave, basically if you leave me the fuck alone, ain't nobody gonna find out about you being a dirty cop, right? Because that's when he was because Diamond was talking about how he's changed, right? But he was like, mm, and you're a dirty cop, and he says, you know, when I was in jail, the cops that were came in there that were dirty, they didn't fare too well, right? So. He told Diamond to get the fuck out of his car. I'm like, exactly, right? So then we see Jannard. So Jannard is talking to Elijah, right? So Jannard, once again, is still in his feelings about the situation with Diamond. He's upset about the fact that Diamond is working with Tommy and with now Victor, right? Because, and I and I, I do get Jannard's, I, I get where Jannard's coming from, right? Jannard gave up his whole life. He gave up 15 years of his life when Diamond was in prison, right? And he ran CBI, so I, I get it to an extent, and I and I and I keep I keep saying the same thing, right? Because I get it. It's, it's under, I get where Diamond is coming. Diamond, I get Diamond and Jannard, right? Like I said, Jannard is the muscle. He's not necessarily the brains of the operation. The brains of the operation happens to be Diamond, right? Because I mean, let's just think about it. Jannard wanted to work with those corner boys that are trigger happy. That'll draw more eyes to you and your organization. And Diamond said, absolutely not, right? So I get I get where Jannard's coming from, but I also get Diamond, right? Jannard's whole thing is, you were in prison. I'm the one that's ran the business and held shit down while you were in prison for 15 years. I want to go to college. I didn't get to go to college because I've been doing this shit, right? Now that you out, you want me to be second in You want me to take a second seat to you? And then you got you... You don't want to work with me. You want to work with a motherfucker from from New York that you don't even know. And then you want to work with the op Vic, right? So I get where he's coming from. But at the same time, like, 
like I said, excuse me, y'all didn't remember me face. Like I said, his thinking process, not the best, right? So Elijah was like, well, how about we just take our own our people and start our own shit? He was like, nah, man, I ain't going to do no shit like that. Like I put in the blood, sweat, and tears into CBI. I'd be damned if I'm going to let it go now. But I'm like, but you're doing stupid shit. But hey, that's neither here nor there, right? So then we see Tommy. So Tommy is talking to Diamond, right? So Tommy is looking for some backup when he goes against the Serbians, right? So Diamond says, okay, I got a deal for you, right? He says, I want controlling stake in the Serbians pipeline, right? But I also want 51%. He was like, ooh, that's a lot, right? So he says, you know, I would give you 51%, right? But I don't have 50% in it, right? Because he's working with Victor, right? And you guys remember in last week's episode when Victor came, he took out, you know, um, Tatiana's two men and then he took out Tatiana, right? So they're a, they're a partnership at this point, right? And he told him, and um, Tommy told Diamond the same thing that, you know, he helped me in a, in a bind when I needed to take out, you know, Tatiana. So he helped me, right? So then we see them and we see Diamond, we see Victor and we see tommy right so they're watching some of the serbians right so the serbians they they work in packs of six right so they're trying to devise a plan but then they also have to figure out what is this percentage going to be right so i think they said a third they all take a third right but then they were like there's this one percent that's missing 34 percent right so tommy has to make a decision what do you want to do do you want to do it by yourself or do you want to give up 34 percent stake right so tommy says okay i'm cool with it right he says but we're gonna need Jannard. and diamond is like i don't think we can count on Jannard. he's like i need everybody possible right and i know why diamond was saying i don't think you have Jannard because of the situation that Jannard just doesn't fuck with tommy right and i think that and like i said earlier one is jealousy with Jannard. It's jealousy. But then also, like I said, I, I, it's, it's, it's a weird situation because I can see both sides of the coin, right? I can see Diamond's point of view, but I can also see Jannard's point of view. And it's really, it's really an interesting, right? It's really interesting. Let me know where you guys stand, right? Do you, whose side do you, who do you side with more? Do you side with Diamond or you do you side with Jannard or are you in the middle kind of like I am where you see Diamond's point of view that Jannard doesn't make the best decisions, but you see Jannard's point of view. Jannard has been running CBI for the last 15 years while Diamond has been in prison. And now you get out of prison, you take over the organization that I've been running for 15 years. And then you don't even like you can't even consult with me. Right. You do shit with, like I said, Tommy, who you don't know that just came from New York and you working with Vic from the Flynn family and you know that the Flynn's don't fuck with black people, right? So it's just an interesting situation, but I I, 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 I don't know. Let me know where you guys stand. So we see Diamond. So Diamond is running the plan by Jannard. And <laughs> once again, Jannard is in his feelings about working with Tommy and Victor. And I, I again, I get it. I get it. I get it. But Diamond got him to agree to it once he told him about the 34% that they, this 30% interest that they get, right? And Angel was like, damn, that is a good ass deal. Like, we can't turn that shit away. So, yeah, they're going to do this, right? So, <clears throat> now we see them as the plan is underway, right? So, we see them and we see some of the Serbians, right? So, one guy walks out and another guy's like, where's your gun? And then, pop! He got shot, right? So then a shootout started and they took those guys out, right? So, you know, um, Simon is with them. So I'm like, oh, yes, man, that made my dick hard. And when he said it made his dick hard, pop, he got popped. And then another, they had, there was another guy that they didn't account for. So they, they, they took him out, right? So then we see them at this warehouse, right? And when we're at the warehouse, um... They're at the warehouse, right? And at this point, they don't have, they have, they got the, brrr, they, I mean, they really spraying motherfuckers, right? So, 
It's Tommy, it's Diamond, and um, Vic, Jannard, and Elijah. And I, I know some other people there. So they just taking everybody out one by one by one, right? So then Jannard and Elijah go around, and they're getting ready to take somebody out, right? But Elijah got shot. I was like, oh, I'm like, Elijah's about to, he's about to leave us. And unfortunately, we lost Elijah, right? So, yeah. So, after that is all done, right, Tommy had got a text message, or no, he got a phone call, and it's the big boss, Murkovich. I think that's how you pronounce his name, Murkovich. I can't, I'll get it, you guys. So, he's talking to Tommy, and um, basically, he's letting Tommy know that I got Liliana, right? So, Tommy's telling them, like, hey, you know, you know we got to find Liliana. They're like, mm-mm. The work is done, so you on your own, right? Speaking of Liliana, right? So, remember I told you earlier, she left that apartment high as fuck, right? So, I guess she's come down off that high. If she didn't, they got her in a chair. She's she's um, tied to the chair, right? Or taped to the chair, whichever one you want to say it, right? They took her hand out of the tape and broke her fucking hand or her fa- I was like, oh, that was nasty to me. Oh, when they did that, and then he said, "Where's Tommy? Um, where's Tommy Egan?" Her her flicked ass middle finger was just—I mean, it was just bent and contort. Oh, oh God, it was like a contortionist. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. But hey, they fucked her. I mean, they fucked her finger off. Um, it's about to rain. All right, so then at one point, I think that um, Mirkovich, I can't pronounce the man's name, right? He told Tommy where he was, right? So he was at his his place, right? So we see Tommy. So Tommy pulled back up to his um, his uh, his place that he's standing at, right? So he says, let me see her. So they take Liliana out the car. But then Tommy notices in the background that there is a, a SUV and it's speeding their way, right? So the SUV speeds they way and it just starts spraying at all of them, right? Now, let me tell you guys who that was. That was Jannard who shot at them, right? Because we see at the end of the episode where Jannard has, you know, the SUV. He done burnt that, I mean, he done burnt that hole to a crisp, right? And we did see him at one point because we saw him outside of the barbershop, right? Diamond was in the barbershop. Jannard had the gun in his, in his lap. I'm like, well, I was thinking, I'm like, I know he's not going to try to take his brother out right here, right now. Not your brother. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right, you guys. So I'm trying to make sure that I got every scene. There is one There's one more scene that we got to talk about. I just didn't know where to put it. We, so we see JP, right? So JP is at his crib, right? And he's watching his home video of Tommy and Kate. So he, take, he takes his phone and he takes a picture of Kate. I was like, ooh. I told you guys, I felt like we were going to see my girl Kate at some point, her raggedy ass. I'm like, um, JP, Tommy forewarned you about who Kate is and who Kate ain't. I don't think you want to meet Catherine. I just don't think you want to meet Kate. I really, truly don't. But then he also goes through some pictures and he finds this picture of him and Tommy. Not knowing that they, you know, I think he was like on a basketball court. You see him and then you see Tommy in the background, right? Um, so yeah, you guys, I think that that's the end of the episode. Let me just make sure that I got everything discussed and we'll see. All right, you guys. So that is it. Um, I hope you um, you guys leave your comments in the comment section below and let me know what you guys thought about this overall episode. It was good, right? I enjoyed it, right? I, I enjoyed the shootout. I enjoyed this whole episode. I'm really enjoying Force. Force is, if I were to rank these series which ones I like the most. Um, I like book two. And it's really interesting. I didn't, I didn't expect to like book two because of Tariq, right? Love book two. Love book three, Raising Canaan, right? And I like Force, right? So I think if I had to rank them, honestly, I don't know. Because book two and book three are neck and neck for me. So I can't really say which one is top. Actually, I think I, I think I want to say book three, book two, book four. 
Book two and book three are interchangeable, really and truly, to be quite honest with you, because I, I enjoy both series. But hey, that's um, let me know what you guys think about it. You know, let me know which ones you guys like the most. We'll discuss in the comment section. If I did leave anything out, you guys feel free to leave it in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, share the video, and until the next one, stay safe, take care of yourselves, you guys. Remember to wash your hands, please wear a mask, socially distance, be blessed, and I'll see you guys later on for Candy and the Gang, you guys. All right.